hello, hello. We're doing chapter 18, Birth of Isaac. I'll continue on the story with Abraham and Sarah and how he was able to keep his promise, God's promise that Sarah would be the one to give him the heir and the descendants, numerous as the stars. And Abraham didn't believe God at that point. He thought maybe Sarah was not it. So he attempted to uh, have a baby with Hagar, but it turned out he was not the promise. It was Isaac all along and it was going to come through Sarah. So we're going to continue on with that story. And Hi, Mark. Hello. All right. So uh, chapter 18, the Lord, which is Yahweh, appeared to Abraham near the great oak trees of Mamre, while he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and saw three men standing across from him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself toward the ground. So that's interesting. Three, he saw three men, right? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, he didn't he said, know my, well, I mean, he's, he's already seen the angel of the Lord though, right? Yeah. I guess. I mean, he's been talking to God. He should he should know what's he should know I mean he's been talking with God the angel of the Lord has appeared to a few different people it sounds like at this up to this point to Hagar um, but he also bowed himself towards the ground so he must have known something who they were you don't yeah do that. so he he bowed himself toward the ground he said my Lord now what is it hold on here now that's not Yahweh there. So he's not saying Yahweh. Yeah. It's like this the word for like master, right? He said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. I will bring a piece of bread so that you may refresh yourselves. After that, you may pass on now that you have come to your servant. It's kind of interesting. Um. Like I wonder what he like. What is Abra Who does Abraham think these people are? Kind of weird because he doesn't think it's God, but at the same time, they're he's considering them his master. Although that might just mean like sir, you know what I mean? Like what does that really mean in that context? In the see, the focus is really on he's uh, he's being a good host. You know, he's being yeah. polite and friendly. He's 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 taking care of these people. But why would you bow himself towards the ground if it was just that? When's the last time have you done that with your guests? Well, no, but this is like four thousand years ago. Maybe yeah, that's what but they did. Sound, you know what I mean? uh, the sign of bowing, hospitality, hospitality. But then he's like so saying, like, yeah, maybe he recognizes they're like important. Maybe they look like important people. Does, does he realize that? I don't think he realized because here, okay, let's just keep going and see what happens. And they said, So do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, Quickly prepare, prepare three measures of fine flour needed and make cakes. Then Abraham ran to the herd and took a choice and tender calf and gave it to a servant who hurried to prepare it. He then brought butter and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. So it sounds like he think like these are not just normal people. He's really making a fuss, right? We yeah. have, these are like uh, important people. At the very least, these are important people. Maybe he recognizes these are messengers of God somehow. Maybe, um, maybe not, he thought they were really told. Angels. Maybe, yeah. Let's see. What, see if uh, we get a hint of if how much he knows. Then they said. Then they said to him, "Where is Sarah, your wife?" He said, "There in the tent." So they know his. They know his wife's name somehow. Yeah. Right. One of them said, "I will certainly return to you about this time next year, and Sarah, your wife, will have a son." He maybe, maybe in context, he kind of knows there's something going on because he's already. Uh, if you think about the previous chapters, you know, God is telling them what's going to happen. Yeah, and, and Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind them. And now Sarah, now Abraham and Sarah were old and very advanced in age, and Sarah was well past childbearing, which we know already. Yeah, it's very repetitive. Uh, Genesis is very repetitive, I find. Therefore, oh, Sarah, and I'm not complaining. I'm just it's an observation. <laughs> Sarah, therefore, Sarah laughed to herself, saying, "After I am, after I am so old." And my Lord is old also. See, there's my Lord, right? That's Abraham. That's yeah. not, you know, my 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 master or sir, my it's like a it's like a honorific title. Is old also, shall I have pleasure? Shall I have a, a child? 
Then the Lord said to Abraham, so so there she laughed, right? There she laughed. Mm -hmm. Um, Then the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I surely bear a child when I'm old? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you at this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Is anything too difficult for the Lord? So that's a good um, little question, right? Rhetorical question. Well, um, I guess that's no. So that would be an answer to somebody <laughs> who said if they don't have a womb anymore, could they still have a child? Yeah, and that one is Yahweh there. Yeah, so, so um, wouldn't, it, wouldn't that is anything to do so that's something we can yeah. all we can all kind of uh ask or you can remind ourselves sometimes by asking that yeah, question. should be a good plaque on the wall is anything too difficult for the lord yeah exactly i mean if he created the entire world right so he knows how to yeah. manipulate the uh the the uh, this world to do certain to do miracles that we cannot do because he created the world yeah i think he established that in the very first chapter very few verses creating everything within six little days so by his word right by speaking everything to existence he can change things that do exist also right um he was able to have birth of jesus through a virgin womb right and and throughout genesis you see a lot where the uh or in the old testament you see women who are who could not have a child, and then suddenly God allows them to have a child. You know, so and you know they always you, t- you hear about like these fertility gods and goddesses from the ancient Near East, and and really Yahweh is really the one who brings about fertility, right? But uh, even when so, they take it upon themselves, like the fertility clinics, you think that's still coming from God or? Is, I well, guess I'm just I'm just saying in general. In general, God yeah. God can't you know God is the one who blesses people with fertility, not not these ancient Near Eastern gods and goddesses. No, but that that's a very good point. To. So here's the question, though: in modern day, when people try to conceive outside of the natural way, is it still a blessing from God, no matter how you do it? I don't know. Maybe it depends on their heart or the. Uh, well, nowadays you see people wanting to become gods themselves, and they want to be their own god and create life without God. You know what I mean? So if you're doing it without God, and you're going to create life, and especially if you start to change it and upgrade people and do all this. Yeah. So in certain situations, then it's definitely not from God. If you're trying to be your own god, that's almost like Abraham Abraham having a child with his maid. Um it's kind of not exactly God's plan. Right. But God still bless Ishmael when they do it in non way, like non human way that, you know, with the genetic engineering, let's say, would the child still be a child of God that he can bless? Well, like I, there's IVF. Yeah. Which is still based on human seed. Yeah. Right. It's just kind of implemented in a different way. Right. If it's still natural human seed and yeah. it's just being fertilized with the help of some technology, right. that might be different than, you know, full blown genetic modification created in a lab that is well, that's what's further happening. removed. Yeah. So uh, there must be, um, I don't know what the exact line is where you draw, but where it becomes, you know, somewhat evil or wicked. Obviously, there are some that's obviously, you know, an abomination to God. But, yeah. uh, you know, if you have a, a couple who really want to have a child and they, uh, or, or even, uh, they use surrogates sometimes. Right. And, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess that someone who's proceeding in that direction would have to pray about it and, uh, examine their own hearts, you know, uh, to see what, if they're, if they believe what they're doing is right. If, uh, what is God telling them to do? You know, I think that's a much bigger topic because there's, so I think it's more, things. yeah. There's different shades. It's not like, like I, there might be a, a way of doing IVF that's not wicked. You know what I mean? Maybe. I but don't they're know. beyond IVF now. They yeah, are able yeah, to take yeah. uh, any cell and create an embry- embryo out of it. They don't even need a mother and father to. Yeah. To me, that seems more like the days of Noah kind of stuff. The yeah. <laughs> Genesis 6. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. The yeah. There's are- a line you cross at some point, you know. 
Yeah. And like the clones, do they have a soul? Are they, you know, made of God? Like what, what, what is all this happening where these living beings are being created? Yeah. And yeah. They, at some point they're getting, um, well, you, you have the, we have the Nephilim example already, right? That yeah. they, they are, they are, they do exist. They're alive. But they're they're uh, hybrids. They're they're you're not supposed to mix the seeds, right? So I think at some point, if you contaminate the seed itself, the image of God. Once you lose that image of God, which is uh, our ability to have relation, part of it's our ability to to have a relationship with God, right? Once yeah. you once you once you modify that, then then you lose that. Once you lose the image of God that's passed down through the seed, then you then you're in trouble. I think. Right. Yeah, they're the image of the beast. Trouble, they, but, you become you know, the image of the beast at some point. Yeah. Except I wonder, you know, these babies that are going to be growing up, even if they're not of God like the way that we perceive them, do they have that soul? Did God give them a soul that we should love? Do one? Nephilim have a soul? <sighs> I don't I'm sure they did because they're trapped. Well they have a spirit. Yeah, they have there's some essence of life that probably transcends death but it's uh not going to uh they will not be part of god's kingdom they will not inherit eternal life yeah. they'll be damned they'll be destroyed yeah they'll they're uh they're not they're not in the book of life probably right if, if someone creates them outside of god's plan by themselves like a mad scientist that's not going to be in the book of life no you know and what perhaps I mean? that's what's going to happen that all these new beings are going to show up. So according to biblical prophecy, that that is happening, and uh, it will be. Those are the terrors. Yeah, <laughs> those are the terrors. You know, it's nothing we need to be too afraid of. You know what I mean? Although when you see him like destroying entire towns, we can talk about that when we talk about Sodom, which is coming up real soon. <laughs> you know, yeah. So I, I just. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Well, one more thing I wanted to point out was that remember in the last chapter uh, where Abraham was ninety nine years old and he laughed and he's and God told him then it was going to be one year from today when he came to him that you will have a son. So why is this so weird now? Now that one year <laughs> later. Well, um, is is it a year later? Because now they're saying not, it's going to yeah. be a year from now again. So it's almost like this. Uh, it's almost like this. This could have happened the next week or something. The next yeah. day, maybe Abraham thought, "Hey, these might be like messengers of God somehow." But they look like men. See, they, see these people. They didn't. Did they know about the angels and all this stuff? Like, how how much did they know about the supernatural world? They were talking with God somehow. There was the angel of God. It was I think the it flood. Was they different. they would have they would have known about the flood. They would have heard about that. Yeah. They had their god they had their pagan gods and goddesses. They they had a very anyone had a supernatural worldview back then. I don't the, even think it had to be a worldview. I think they were living among the supernatural very <laughs> So it was normal for them, you know? Well, in the the pagan religions had uh you know, magicians and sorcerers, prophets, uh they they had prophets, they had uh priests, they had a they had temples everywhere, right? Yeah. Just like they do now where I live, there's temples. I would just yesterday we saw <laughs> just we went to this mountain yesterday and it, people were like praying to statues of buddha yeah who was exposing one breast by the way and not the other and buddha <laughs> buddha has large breasts i shouldn't say this but uh buddha buddha is androgynous actually buddha is an well, androgynous they, god they so they, they, but they would pray they were praying before they would even enter the mountain area yeah, they had to do a little dedicate, you know, like because that's like holy. That's because I think there was a temple on top, so that's like sacred space for them, you know. Yeah, it's the that's like temple, all over the east. Even like there's a lot of temples. I mean, the high places. Else. Yeah, yeah. Let's go on. So yeah. So then the Lord said to Abraham, "Why did Sarah laugh and say, sh shall I surely bear a child when I'm old?'" Is anything too difficult for the Lord? Oh, we read that already. Yeah. At the appointed time, I will return to you at this time next year, and Sarah will have a son. Then Sarah denied it, saying, I did not laugh because she was afraid. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of reminds me of Adam and Eve a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's the same uh, story it, over and over. It kind of is because 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 uh, Abraham believed his wife. They mm -hmm. were uh, and but he said, Yes, you did laugh. <laughs> yeah. It's just something difficult. They're like like um 
yeah it's hard for people to to believe to trust god sometimes i think or to, to but to abraham left too he didn't get rid of yeah him. they did but he was declared righteous through his faith genesis 15 6. the sodom and gomorrah oh well it is kind of interesting transition. yeah the, the the progression of this story this was they call this historical narrative and there's uh things we can learn from it you know this is torah too by the way this is teaching and instruction of god um, yeah. Torah is not just all these laws and Levit Leviticus, you know, this is like... Uh, well, it's history. Yeah, historical narrative through these characters and God's interacting with these characters and we see how they respond to God and usually not perfectly at the very least, you know. Mm -hmm. And then we got Sodom and Gomorrah who is, uh, well, should we just read it? Yeah. Um, uh, the men, so they, they're called men again. These are what we find out later. These are angels, but they're called men. And now, did they eat? Did we saw them eating already? Right? Did yeah. they just they ate? So these these angels actually ate food. So do they have a stomach? Do they go to the bathroom? They do must. they have male parts? So that's they why must. before, like Genesis six, we're talking about how can angels have babies with human women? Well, I don't know. How can they eat lunch? It's kind of the same yeah. question. But it? but but here's a problem with that. <laughs> If they look like human in the human form, they have a human DNA and human seed, then they can produce human other human seeds. They have human so, what about internal organs? Do they have a heartbeat? You know, do yeah, they have they all the have internal all organs? They can have everything human, but then how does that human interaction turn into these Nephilims? That's the part that I don't get. Because there's no mm -hmm. angel seed in human genetics so either you know like if it, was, angels, it was compatible somehow yeah so it that was compatible seed was angels we're we're, we're, in we're probably genetics. similar we're very, i think we're very similar to angels more than we realize I'm not sure that we are. i'm not saying we are angels but there's a there's some kind of similarity yeah you know and, and if they manifest in human form how do they do that you right. see this a lot in movies. There's that movie, uh, Captain Marvel, I think it was, where they were shape shifting all the time. And I, I think of like that. Maybe they they would shape shift. And there's people out there who say they've seen people shape shift and all. And I've never seen. As far as I know, I've never seen it. Well, if they shape shift, then that means their <laughs> genetic makeup is still angel. So that's how maybe you can transfer angel seed to human seed because they're just a mirage. Well, well. Or do they do they have the seed once they enter our realm? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, see, we just don't know. It's you'd have to have an like an optop. You'd have to do an autopsy on an angel, or yeah. just to observe, or to sit down and uh, examine an angel to really know all these answers. Yeah, um, which we won't really get to do so. But but um, we were told that we were told that a that Abraham had lunch. They ate food. Why would they eat food? You know. Maybe they need food when they come to Earth. They, um, it's. I mean, it's. Well, it's, if they uh, shape shift it into humans, they might because they probably get tired and hungry. If they get a totally human, like Jesus ate. I mean, but Jesus was born of a woman, you know. So that's right. a little different, I think. These 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 uh, angels, they basically, I think, my understanding is they they probably live in heaven most of the time, and then but occasionally they come and manifest on Earth. Yeah, they can so go across did, dimensions. And what do they look? Well, I think heaven's actually above us, like physically above us. That's yeah, but they still because it depends on your there. view of what the Earth is. You know. Yeah. Well, they have but, to uh, travel without spaceships, though. If they just come and go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do they? How do they? Do they fall down? Are they? Well, they. What is? See, it's like, you know. You can have a door. To what door. is an angel? Yeah. yeah. What do they look like when they're in heaven? What do they look like? What's their That's essence? So there, there's something about light and energy, and they, they, we have a they have a glorified the good word there because we will be glorified like them in the future, right? We, yeah. They so have I a think glorified our skin's body. Glow. In the presence of God, our skin's going to glow just like Moses did. Yeah. Yeah. I agree and if they're that. around God all the time, I'm sure their bodies have to reflect all the glory too. And so when they come to Earth, they have to kind of uh, be in a kind of a de a de glorified, unglorified, a decayed body, because that's what we are. Well, maybe, yeah, we'll see. But it's it's kind of an interesting topic, though. Uh, 
Okay, so what's someday going we'll on? know all the answers. Um, the yeah. man rose up and looked towards Sodom. I'll just start again, 16. Yeah. And Abraham went with them to see them on their way. So they're walking, right? Mm -hmm. And they're looking. They're they're pretty much like people. And there are times in the Bible where the, the people in the story don't realize they're talking to angels. Yeah. So, and this may be one of Abraham might know, but then the Lord said, Yahweh said, should I hide from Abraham what I'm doing? Since Abraham will surely become a great and mighty nation and all the nations of the earth will be blessed in him. I chose him and he will instruct his children. Say, I chose him. Abraham didn't choose any of this. Right. I chose him and he will instruct his children. He will instruct, he will instruct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. That's Remember, we get the word justification, right? Mm -hmm. Righteousness. That's what we talked about in the previous episode. So that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he promised him. Wow. That's like the whole Bible story right there. Right? <laughs> that's, that's what God yeah. wants. That's what God wants. That's the master plan right there. He wants a righteous and justice world and people doing righteousness and uh, having justice, which we don't have these days, right? We live in a world without the uh, righteousness and justice. Yeah. And, uh, so, and what did God promise Abraham? It was a land and uh, people, the kingdom, essentially. Yeah, it was kingdom a of God. kingdom of God in the um, in, uh, Garden of Eden. Like, that's it. Yeah. yeah, that's what God wants us to have, and that's what God's trying to create. And I think he wants us to participate in this creation, right? That's that's why this movie is so is thousands of years long, such a long time. It's not just a five-minute short movie. <laughs> <laughs> he wants us to participate and go through this process. Yeah, it's not a short film. It's a three-hour saga. This is, this is Lord of the Rings we're living yeah. in. Yeah. You know? <laughs> So uh, lots of uh, tribulation and uh, drama. So then the Lord, Yahweh, said, because the out, oh, this is a good one here. Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has come to me. If not, I will know. Very interesting. Um, so, so people are crying. So, I think that's important. People are crying out to God, which is probably what we should be doing now, right? Yeah, that's what I always to, we should have been doing. Yeah, but. crying out to God. But some people like the way things are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the world. Yeah. Most people like the way things are. They can't wait to get their next uh, medical procedure. You know what I mean? Yeah. Speaking of Sodom. <laughs> So, yeah, the Sodom. So, uh, it's pretty interesting, though. So, like, why does God come down to judge is because he heard the cries from the people. Yeah. Right? That's kind of what it's saying here. It's like, hey, God probably knew what was going on, but he's kind of, uh, you know, he, he people are crying. Somebody's, you know, who, who's crying out? We're not really told. Uh, but somebody doesn't like what's going on in Sodom. Or the outcry. I mean, these would be the victims, I guess. Sodom. I think so, what's happening in Sodom was they they were they're not only a bunch of homosexuals. They were uh, they were really mean people, and they were you know torturing and and killing people. That's kind of the legend. There's a lot of different stories here about Sodom that, in the ancient world, but yeah, that's yeah. Uh, akin to that story where they come to get the angels and how they yeah got. they they had no hospitality. Yeah. yeah. So we get a lot of that from that from that story not only the homosexual aspect which is the the main uh what's what makes it so famous but and i think there's a lot of transvesticism there was ch child sack like every kind of evil you could imagine was going on there there were just really mean wicked nasty people and so I, whoever I, I, was being yeah the people the victims of that place were probably crying out to god uh somehow you know oh i'm sure because the outcry yeah. That has come to me. Maybe they weren't even crying to God. They they didn't know who God was. Maybe you know, not many not many people knew God at this point, right? Or they forgotten about God. Noah knew God, but what happened to God? Like people seem to have forgotten about God. Well, they must have known something in, the world. in their heart to be able to pray for that. Yeah, because we're created by God. So yeah, we do have this kind of natural uh, connection to God. I think every everybody, but it's uh, Satan tries to destroy that. So when we come to where their direct destruction is, I have a 
question after we get there. That's been burning all right. my mind for a while. Um, all right. So, all right, let's get, let's do it. 22. Yeah. The men, did we read this already? The men turned away from there and went towards Sodom, but Abraham remained standing before the Lord. So now, see, now you have, you had three men. It sounds like one of them is the angel of the Lord. Yeah. And then the two men, so two men, I think we're told later, two men went to Sodom and and one, and Abraham is there standing before the Lord, who sounds like he's also standing there. And so this, this would, again, is the angel of the Lord with yeah. two other angels who are not angels of the Lord, but they, they are angels that work for the Lord. They're different entities. You know what I mean? Yeah. Then Abraham do, drew near and said, shall you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? There's the righteous and the wicked. Yeah, I love this part. I always use this to remind myself and others. And the righteous have what? Like, what's the difference? The righteous have faith in God, and they are at least, you know, trying to live by the ways of God. With just like God, they just told us, right? Justice and um, righteousness. So it's interesting. Like, like everyone, like I miss that. I just noticed that now. Verse nineteen, God tells us how He wants us to live. Verse yeah. nine. Go back to verse nineteen, real quick. So he keep the you know He will instruct His children and His household after Him to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. Mm -hmm. And then we're told about Sodom where they are not doing righteousness and justice. They are wicked. There's a direct connection. That's why the Sodom story happens right here. You know, that because they, they, they these things actually happened in history, but the way they wrote it out is they're making these connections. Okay, verse 24. Yeah, okay. Shall you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? That's the wheat and the tares. Yeah. What if there are 50 righteous in the city? And that would imply there's like thousands of unrighteous, right? Shall mm -hmm. you also destroy and not spare the place for the 50 righteous who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be treated like the wicked. Far be it from you. Should not the judge of all the earth do right? This is Abraham talking to God, kind of telling him how to be God almost. But I think what's happening is Abraham is partic Abraham is learning the ways of God through this process. Yeah. He's understanding the mind of God. It's like, oh wait, how? What is righteousness? What is justice? If I, if God, God should do this. Uh, you know, he's understanding the mind of God really. Yeah, this and it's also a good. Uh, in our, it's like a prophecy for our day, too, that he's mm. not going to destroy anything where righteous, without at least dealing with the righteous, protecting them or taking them out before any judgment on the rest. I love this whole story where it counts down. So we, I guess we could keep reading. But I, I think this is all prophetic of the future, how he handles the wicked and the tares. I mean, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. And there's a lot of verses in the Bible about Sodom that we can talk about later. Um, yeah. When we finish, we'll finish the chapter and then we can look at some other cross references I have here. Um, well, let's go back. This one here preceding the sentence before that should not the judge of all the earth do right? It was, yeah. Obviously, the answer is yes. And God is a God of justice and righteousness. And that's what he wants us to be. Yeah. But obviously, the world is not that way. So, no. uh, so the Lord said, "If I find in Sodom fifty righteous within the city, then I will spare the entire place for their sakes." Isn't that amazing, though? So, fifty—if a million people were mm -hmm. wicked, and only fifty were in that city—he's going to spare this city. It's, it's only because of the righteousness. Of in Sodom, people, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the wicked get to live and continue yeah. the wickedness. Although in the flood, God plucked out the righteous person and his family, yeah, and killed all the like he separated them. Yeah, right? he built the ark. That was the so. Um, but so he did. He spares the righteous somehow and punishes the wicked. But yeah. here it's like, yeah, I will spare the entire place for their sakes. Okay, so twenty-seven. But you know what, though? <laughs> that he could have done the same philosophy 
before flooding the earth. But I think it's because like the wicked and evil was so great. It was like he just decided, I'll just take out the eight people. And this that kind of mimics what happens later, where he rescues lots. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. He does end up taking them out and then destroying the wicked. Yeah. But he takes them out. So he does destroy it. We know he does destroy Sodom, right? He does not we know that he does not spare the entire place. No. So I think this is pretty prophetic and analogous to what we just already read in Noah's story. Um, All right, 20, let's, let's, just, let's just see what happens here, and then we can comment more. Uh, then Abraham answered and said, I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Suppose there were five. <laughs> it's like, God, let me give you my opinion of the situation. <laughs> <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> Suppose there were five less than the 50 righteous. Will you destroy the city for lack of five? And he mm -hmm. said, if I find 45 there, I will not destroy it. <laughs> and he spoke to him yet again and said, suppose there were there will be 40 found there. And he said, I will not do it for the sake of 40. Uh -huh. And he said to him, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak. So, suppose there will be 30 found there. <laughs> said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. He said, behold, I have, <laughs> I have undertaken to speak to the Lord. So <laughs> suppose 20 are found there. He's he said, I will, not <laughs> I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry, and I will speak only once more. Suppose 10 will be found there. Then he said, <laughs> I will not destroy it for the sake of 10. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had stopped speaking to Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. So I, thought, like, I guess the yeah. whole thing is funny to me. Yeah, it goes on way too long. It's like, <laughs> but he's trying to like, Abraham's trying to figure out like God, like he's trying to understand God a little bit, right? Like, uh, so how do you operate? How, do, what do you, like, what kind of, what do you do? Like, do you, <laughs> like, what are you going to do here? Like he's trying, he doesn't know, right? He's learning, he's, he's entering in a relationship with God, getting to know God a little bit, right? He's trying so to figure out his red line. Where does it cross? Yeah, and maybe maybe that's almost, it's like, is that prayer? Is he praying when he's talking to God? Because you hear that sometimes, like, prayer prayer is talking to God. Is that what he's doing? I mean, I don't know. It sounds like he's just talking to God, but... But God answers maybe, back. It's so Maybe that, maybe this, yeah, we could maybe apply this to our prayer life a little bit, maybe. Like, uh, God, like, what do you, like, because we don't know everything about God necessarily, and we can ask but him he's questions. he's getting answers we, here. Can we ask God, we can ask, so we can ask God questions, right? Chapter 19 is kind of the climax of this. Uh, we, we got the setup, and now yeah. we get the, uh, the the action kind of comes next. Uh, now right. the two angels came to Sodom in the evening, and the lot was sitting at the gate of Sodom. When Lot saw them, he rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face towards the ground, just like Abraham. And uh, then he said, here, my lords, please turn in your servant's house and spend the night and wash your feet, and then you may rise early and go on your way. This sounds familiar. In what way? This is exactly what Abraham did. He mm -hmm. bowed himself to the face of the ground. Yeah. And he gave them instructions to wash their feet mm. and then go on their way after like they were. Like showing good hospitality. Yeah. Uh, they said, no, we will stay in the open square all night. So what does that hmm. mean? Well, like, maybe they, uh, maybe, well, they're, see, they're on a mission from God to judge Sodom. So maybe they want to observe what's happening in Sodom. You know, they, they're basically the saying, yeah, we'll stay, uh, well, you know, they're, they're denying, they don't want to stay at Lot's house. Yeah. But we'll stay in the town square. You know, like uh, maybe they're not even going to sleep or something. They just want to observe what's going on in the city because that's yeah. kind of why they came there. Strongly insisted. Um, so they turned aside with him and entered his house. But he made them a feast and baked them unleavened bread. Mm. And they ate. Okay. Now, so now they're eating again. These angels are eating. Yeah. They, I guess they're humanish. Um, yeah. They're walking. They, and and we, we're not told if Lot knows. Or if the Sodomites know that if these people are angels or human, you know what I mean? It's a bit, it's a bit ambiguous 
but we'll see what it actually says. So, um, okay, so before they lay down, the men of the city, the men of Sodom, being both old and young, all the people from every quarter surrounded the house. They then called to the lot and said to him, where are the men that came to you tonight? Bring them out to us so they may have relations with them. It's a very weird. That we may know them. Yeah, it's a, sec it's a sexual reference, right? Yeah, but what the heck, though? So, <laughs> Sodom is both young and old, right? <laughs> and they all, like, gather, yeah, every one of them. Well, God has already heard the outcry that this place, the sins of Sodom were exceedingly great. So, and yeah, they are. They are. These people are, are but evil. Who, They're sick. How, how do all these people from every quarter... Say we want to have sex with these two guys. I, I, I what? Where is it? Kind of the opposite. It's like it's like uh, Abraham and Lot showed these angels hospitality and kindness. Yeah. And then these Sodom, the people in Sodom want to want to rape them. It's like extreme opposite uh, way you treat strangers. I guess. <laughs> but it's so odd. It's just like everybody from all of these surrounding quarters know about these two new guys that came to his house and the first thought that they have was let's just go rape them well i think if you go to downtown minneapolis the same thing <laughs> might happen no i hope not <laughs> yeah <laughs> it'd be like everybody going after two people just to do that that's i i don't know i just think this is really odd fresh meat fresh meat it is fresh meat and young <laughs> and old so well here's the thing though it, here, the the real question is if the sodomites know that these are two angels, then they want to go have sex with angels. And that is, that is a view that people have, and that might be the case, you know, as well as the homosexual aspect. They might be, they might, because, you know, and I, th I believe in Sodom there are a lot of transvestites who were pretending to be, you know, the transvestites think they're angels, essentially, yeah. or demigods, right? They think they're angels, and so if Sodom had all these transvestites, then that was part of this uh, this ancient, you know, these rituals that are, it's kind of like sex magic, right? They're having sex with angels, and the transvestites represent the angels and the gods, and now these two actual angels walk in, and they want to have sex with them too. You know what I mean? So it's all kind of connected somehow. But it's so way. weird. It's really weird. Oh, it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, I mean, hundreds of people. I mean, think of it. Think of Sodom as a huge gay bar. You know? <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever been into an actual gay bar before. But if a man, if a regular guy walks into a gay bar, then the same thing might happen. You know what I mean? Ooh. I could imagine that. Like the, the all the gay dudes would be like, oh, look at that. Fresh meat. <laughs> so if Sodom, the whole city is like a huge gay bar. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. You know, in Minneapolis. Minneapolis has lots of gay bars, I believe. So here was my question that I always yeah. wondered. Don't they have kids in that place? I guess so, yeah. Well, they're, you know, I guess so. They have humans, right? So they came from somewhere. <laughs> So what, what they were practicing they were not, well, they were uh they were having children and they were going to the gay bar. <laughs> but everybody everybody died in Sodom and Gomorrah except for Lot. Yeah. Yeah. So well, you, spoiler alert. <laughs> you're giving away yeah, the ending. I am. It's a huge spoiler <laughs> alert. Um well I guess the kids must have been wicked too then. Well, it says young and old. Yeah, I mean, it was it was an evil place, and I think there was a lot of uh, occult activity, and, and it was sex magic. Yeah, uh, a lot of what's going on. You know, I mean, there's different theories. There are actually guys like uh, Josephus and um, Philo. Like, there's other non-biblical writings about Sodom as well, as well as the the Bible does talk about Sodom a lot. And I have a few. I have like five other verses to look at later on in the New Testament. And even the Old Testament to to uh, give a little bit of commentary on this situation okay. here, but yeah, it, it is bizarre. But it's evil. But but we, I think this is happening today still. The, the whole world is kind of like Sodom in a way, right? Or at least the tares, the the kingdom of the tares. Well, the way is like, they're is like this. 
They're you sodomized know? children. They're teaching children yeah. to be like this. Yeah, that is exactly so, like Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, and, you scenes. know, this, yeah, this is this yeah. is happening now. They, they're teaching children to become sodomites. And, and now, the, technically, the word sodomite means transvestite, but the people, the residents of Sodom were practicing homosexual, transvesticism, and sex with angels, maybe, right? Maybe well, maybe just, they were creating Nephilim here. Who knows? You maybe know? that's what they thought they were could do. I don't know. But but it's it's men having sex with angels now. Not he, not women yeah. in the past. Before the flood, it was w females would have sex with angels and have right. babies. Now it's gay angel sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been even more wicked Nephilim if they could do anything. I mean, that's what it says. It's it's gay angel sex. Yeah, they want to have sex with these these angels who look like men. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so Lot went out through the door to them and shut the door behind him. And then he said, please, my brothers, do not act so wickedly. Look, I have two daughters who have not been with a man. Please let me bring them out to you so you may do with them as you wish. Only do nothing with these men where they have come under the shelter of my roof. This part is also freaky, too. He's protecting the two angels, but then he gives them his own daughters to rape and do whatever they want with them. Yeah, that's a little disturbing. Yeah, that's. Uh, but and we also see what ha you know. I won't. Let's not give away the spoiler <laughs> on this, but we do see these two daughters appear later on as well. Yeah, but I never um, liked that part either. <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff in the Bible that's a little bit uh, strange and unpleasant. Yeah. So, but they replied, stand back. Also, they said the man came here as an alien and he. Oh, alien. <laughs> That's crazy. They say alien there. Yeah. Well, I, I guess said, they well, meant foreigner. ESV said this fellow came to sojourn. This man came here as an alien. Wow. That's amazing. Mm. Yeah. It means foreigner, I guess. A stranger, stranger yeah. in town. But, but he happens to be an angel. Right. Who is now referred to as an alien in that translation? Interesting. Well, right. it's technically yeah. it's true. They are aliens. They, they are, yeah. They're foreigners, right. right? Yeah. And he keeps acting like a judge. We will deal worse with you than with them. So, oh, wait, wait, hold on, hold on. I never noticed that one. This ain't, see, this alien, he's acting like a judge. Yeah. They don't like that. They don't like that at all, do they? Nope. Wow. That's interesting. I never noticed that little phrase before very interesting so they Sorry came to, there to uh, judge basically right yeah and these guys want to rape them <laughs> <laughs> they're like, like no don't judge us yeah, yeah. wow it's crazy it is. this is like the uh, extreme example of human depravity right here yeah this whole book or the storyline here is so crazy like it's so far out there among it's, all the other stories it's like the exact opposite of what uh, god wants us to do Exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Anyway. But just the depravity of what's actually happening here is so nutty. Um, so they pressed hard against Lot and came close to breaking down the door. But the men reached out their hands and pulled Lot into the house with them and shut the door. Then they struck the men that were at the door of the house, both small and great, with blindness. Oh, so they, that they wore themselves out groping for the door. Oh my God. Blind, so hold on here. Struck with blindness. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> yeah. Two, th two Thessalonians 2. We don't have to go there, but uh, God blinds people who have no love of the truth. Right. They're deceived. Right? Yeah, but the, the, here these, they're literally the wicked, blind. No, well, it's it doesn't matter. It's the same thing. It's like a well, you know yeah. typology. Yeah, the, yeah. The people now are blinded in a in a different way, not physically blinded, but still blinded. They can't see. They can see, but they can't see. They cannot perceive. You know, yeah. They're deceived. So I think it's kind of related. It's uh, they're struck with with blindness. It's like a symbolically, you know, a typology of of being yeah, they're uh, not deceived. Able to see or perceive God or the angels in this case. And but they're so judgment. sick that they're still at it, groping. That's a judgment. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're struck with blindness, and so these angels have the power to strike people with blindness. But but God does as well, and God does blind people 
God hardens people's hearts. God makes it's a punishment. It's a judge. Yeah. Like when people are deceived, it's because they're tares and they're being judged. But they don't even know that that they're being judged. No, of course not. They're but busy uh, being sodomites. You know, I don't know. There's a lot of sickness here where even disabled, they're still at it like zombies. In fact, this entire story kind of reminds me of zombies. It's like The Walking Dead. Yeah. They're like, then the man said to Lot, have you or anyone else here, son-in-laws, sons, daughters, or anyone you have in the city, take them out of this place, for we are about to destroy this place because the outcry against it people has grown great before the presence of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Whoa. It kind of reminds me, you know, like this word destroy in Greek is like, it's a root word of uh, Apollo, the word Apollo, Apollyon, and there's a you know verb and a noun, and it's all related you know, to uh, the word Apollo and to destroy. And that's why you get this angel of the Lord in um, after the Exodus, or before the Exodus, right? The, the Passover has the destroying angel of the Lord. It's an angel of the Lord that destroys all the Egyptians. Yeah. And, um, so it's like a similar kind of thing. And this is, um, yeah, the so, Lord has sent us to destroy it and get out. So the righteous people are told to get out, and we're told to get out of Babylon before Babylon. Babylon's destroyed, right? You know, I just wonder, who are these people who are crying out to God? We, they don't really appear in the story at all, do they? The outcry against its people has become great. From you who? think they you were know? outside of Sodom and Gomorrah because otherwise they'd be destroyed in it. So I guess they may be. Yeah. Maybe it's other strangers who have passed through town and been sodomized and left or something, or, or the people are getting killed there. I mean, I'll have to, I forget where the, but there are some different writings that get into more detail. You know what I mean? I don't know how accurate it really is or not, but, uh, um, like, like they were like really uh they would kill people and i mean they're basically like um kind of like what's going on now behind the scenes it was all exposed there see these things are happening now but they're kept secret yeah. and hidden but there it was like the normal practice you know and maybe that's kind of what they want to turn the world into is a giant sodom where anything goes oh for sure you know and it's kind of like that already but they keep it concealed from us yeah. For the most part, although it's getting more and more open now. Well, it's yeah. the people's choice. You don't have to participate or do any of it. But yet, the, the group gets bigger and bigger to do more immoral things. Where, like, we become, like, the 50 in the city or the 20 in the city. You know, the, the righteous are becoming yeah. less and less. Yeah. So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-law who had married his daughters and said, get up and get out of this place for the Lord will destroy this city. But to his son-in-law, he seemed to be joking. Um, oh, wait, 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 wait. So his, his daughters were engaged. Yeah. And he still wants to pimp out his daughters to these uh, sodomites. <laughs> and the sons-in-law are there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it even gets worse, right? It's yeah, like I, it's like later they're engaged to be married to his daughters, and right in front of the 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 fi the fiance, he's like, "Oh yeah, send my daughters out to go get raped by these and people. do whatever you want with them." And then like the, the fiance is like, "What are you talking about? Don't do that." <laughs> so how does he? This guy is righteous. He's not really. Well, so li Lot's not. He's never called righteous necessarily. Uh, He's spared. Is it maybe, uh, you know, I don't, he's not necessarily one of the sodomites, though. He's not he's as evil as those guys. And maybe because he's related to uh, Abraham, he gets uh, let Special off the hook treatment. a little bit. He, but he is there. You know, he's not exactly um, called righteous. Maybe he kind of is. But he's not. He, he's obviously trying to protect these two guys, yeah. these angels, you know. So he's not wicked in the sense that the other people in that city are. No, but he doesn't have good judgment either. Well, like, all right, take my daughters and do whatever you want with them. <laughs> that and, and it's funny they they see it's funny that they were not interested in that proposal, right? I mean, yeah. So they were maybe these guys had no interest in see why why would they not want to do that to his daughters? Um, are they just completely not interested in women, or they're interested in only men, or do they want the angels? You know what I mean? Well, there must have been something special about them that they recognized that they were after. Because they could have just had sex with themselves, too. 
They want to perform <laughs> sex. See, they, maybe they want uh, to do some kind of occult ritual sex with the angels to get that um, some kind Powers. of spiritual power. Yeah. Well, we're not really told, uh, you know, exactly the motivations of some of these characters here. Yeah. Uh, necessarily, I guess. Okay. We, we know what the angels are trying to do. They're trying to judge the city. And these people well, don't want to be judged. Maybe They're that's not repenting. True. They're not repenting at all. Nope. So in the morning dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters who were here, otherwise you will be consumed in the punishment of the city. Punishment, so the, yeah. The sons-in-law didn't go with them? No. Why? Well, we'll see. We'll see. I don't think so. Um, uh, and while he lingered, the men took hold of his and his wife's hand, and along with the hands of his two daughters, the Lord being merciful to him, and brought him out and set him outside the city. And when they ah, brought mercy, him out, we have mercy. Yeah, sorry, that's mercy. maybe what it was because he wasn't too righteous. Yeah, the sons-in-laws did not go out because that's why the the two daughters were concerned about, you know, how are they going to have children now? Yeah, later, what happens to that? But uh, so what? What happened with the the two sons-in-law? They just because they laughed. They, uh, well, I mean, they just weren't, uh, they weren't married yet, maybe, or they were not, um, maybe they were sodomites as well. I mean, you know, mm. yeah, they were not, they're just not chosen. They're not elect. They're not in the book of life. Nope. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> when they had brought them out, one of them said, escape for, escape for your lives. Do not look behind or stay anywhere in the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest you be destroyed. And then Lot said to them, Please know, my Lord, your servant has found grace in your eyes, and you seem to have shown your mercy, which you have shown to me by saving my life. However, I cannot escape to the mountain, otherwise some evil will overtake me, and I will die. Look, the city is close enough to flee to, and it is a little one. Please let me escape there. Is it not a little one, and my life will be saved? What's going on here? Lot, yeah, lots. Um, yeah, he just doesn't want to go to the mountains. He wants to go to some other city. Hmm. I guess you know maybe there's some implication there that he's not exactly 100 percent obedient to these angels. No, um, he said to him, "I have granted your request in this matter. Also, I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. Hurry, escape there, and I cannot." Do anything until you arrive there. Therefore, the name of the city was called Zohar. So this kind yeah. of ties into the previous thing where God said he will not destroy a city if there's 10 righteous people found there. Um. So Yeah, they, so they have to get out first. Yeah. But he. this also says, I will not overthrow the city of which you have spoken. So he was planning on doing it. But it only got stopped because oh. he go there. Well, that's interesting. Maybe. Because that ties into the earlier struggle. And Zoar means little, by the way. Yeah. In that Hebrew. Was a little so, town that he wanted. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Um, or, or he's just letting him know, maybe. I'm not going to destroy that city. You can go to that one. But yeah, a lot. Apparently, he likes to live in cities, maybe. Mm -hmm. But this was a little city. Well, I don't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he just it was convenient to live there. Uh, the sin had risen over the land, and Lot entered Zoar. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah, and it was from the Lord out of the heaven. So he overthrew those cities and all of the valley and all the inhabitants of the city and what grew on the ground. But his wife behind him looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Mm, Lot's wife. We're not really told much about her, I don't think, so far, right? No, but um, this is always quite... an implication that she didn't trust God or something, because it wasn't the command not to look back. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know that people have all kinds of uh, theories about what that means, I guess. Uh, you you know, know that custom of throwing salt over your shoulder? Like, uh, yeah, yeah. I think it has to do with this. Oh, really? Yeah, because the Maybe. wife turned around and she became salt. So rather than turning around, they just like throw salt, you know, like mm -hmm. behind them. Yeah, you, you could. Yeah, a lot of these superstitions kind of have some kind of 
origin that kind of makes sense yeah I yeah know. i mean i she she looked back maybe she um you know she she it's it, and then yeah so she was kind of punished for just looking back yeah it, it kind of shows that she's still attached to it she's not really getting out mentally spiritually oh. she's stuck back in sodom somehow but it's his wife like why would his life why would the the woman why would a woman like sodom at all you know what i mean doesn't sound like yeah. a good place for a or for anybody really but uh so what well, a strange maybe place it was a very was. perverted place for men and women not i just, guess so uh, i mean we're not really told uh yeah well, i mean that was her home maybe she just she was from there that was her home maybe she had brothers and family members there that could yeah. be likely yeah yeah you know she lost her home and everything in it so i can i can kind of understand that but it says, yeah, um, don't look back. Uh, and she did. So I guess next time something happens to us, don't look back. Now Abraham got up early in the morning and went to the place where he stood before the Lord. Then he looked towards Sodom and Gomorrah and towards all the land of the valley. And he saw the smoke of the land going up like the smoke of a furnace. It's almost like a sacrifice. You know how they have that smoke that goes up after a sacrifice yeah. and it has a pleasant aroma. Yeah. Um, this is almost so. like, it kind of reminds me of that. Like it's, uh, it's not really, I don't know that it's a sacrifice necessarily, but uh, we have that smoke. Symbolically it kind of is. Cause the, it's, a, it's a judgment. Yeah. A punishment. Yeah. So it was that when God destroyed the cities of the valley, God remembered Abraham and sent out loud out of the middle of the destruction when he overthrew the cities in which Galat lived. Hmm. Just yeah. Well, God they, remembered. God remembered. Oh, God remembered Abraham and sent Lot. So he kind of did it for Abraham's sake. He yeah. saved Lot. Yeah, that's why it's it's really kind of like Noah's family. Ouch. Yeah, and Lot yeah. says it sent Lot out in the middle of the destruction. Does that kind of sound yeah. like mid tribulation there? Yeah, like, and Lot Lot didn't really earn it necessarily. Is it, it, it was mercy. It was grace. Yeah. Um, I, I think it almost sounds like this is the, the pre-trib rapture people might yeah. use this story for their case. I think right? so. Well, it does kind of give a clue. I mean, I don't know if they're 100% wrong. Although this is judgment. This is not tribulation. This is not yeah. satanic tribulation. See, Lot endured that. He lived amongst the tares. But this is judge. Ju there's difference between the satanic persecution and the judgment of God, right? Right. So, so we do escape the judgment of God. That's what salvation is, right? We're saved yeah, from what? Sense. We're saved from judgment. Yeah. In that sense, I think God will save his people out of before he judges the wicked. But Satan well, he, he will won't, destroy he the won't saints. Just, yeah. 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 We're, we're, uh, we will not be punished like this. So we're saved from the wrath of God. But, but we may still, I mean, at that when Jesus returns, the wheat and tares are here, and then the wheat are judged and thrown into the fire, and then the tares. Oh no, sorry, opposite. The tares are, are judged and thrown into the fires, <laughs> and the wheat are given eternal life. Like right, right there, they're separated. Yeah, you know what I mean. So uh, I think judgment, kind of, although some of the, I think the satanic tribulation is a judgment on the unbelievers before that event it kind of begins and then also it's a that same tribulation is kind of a test for the believers who are tested you mm -hmm. know what i mean that like satan satan kind of kind of uh torments the entire world the unbelievers are deceived by satan and kind of recruited into his army and they're deceived and they're blinded there was other tears but the wheat are are uh, persecuted by the the satanic forces yeah we're definitely also, persecuted as a kind of I'm a dead. test and part of yeah. a part of the process i'll finish this one off the then lot left zoar and lived in the mountains along with his two daughters who were with him for he was afraid to dwell in zohar he and his two daughters lived in a cave and the firstborn <laughs> said to the younger our father is old and there is no man on earth to have relation with us after the manner of all the earth. Let us make father drink wine and let us lie with him so that we may preserve the lineage of our father. 
So they made their father drink wine that night, and the firstborn went in and had relations with her father. He did not know when she lay down or when she arose. On the next day, the firstborn said to the younger, Indeed, the last night I had relations with my father. Let us make him drink wine tonight also, so that you may go in and have relations with him, so that we may preserve the lineage of our father. So they made their father drink wine and night, and that night also. Then the younger arose and lay down with him, and he did not know when she lay down or when she arose. Therefore, both the daughters of Lot were pregnant by their father. The first, firstborn bore a son and called his name Moab, and he is the father of the Moabites to this day. The younger also gave birth to a son and called his name Ben-Ami, he is the father of the Ammonites to this day. Well, if you go to verse 31, it sounds like the girls believed that the entire earth had been destroyed or that all people had died or something like that. Verse yeah. 31, right? There's no man on earth. They thought there was no more men on earth. Although they, they it sounds like they went to Zoar, that little city, but then they left and go, they went to go live in a cave. Lived in the they, mountains. So isn't that where he was told yeah, to go in the first place? Yeah, so he ended up going there anyway. Weird. And maybe Zoar was kind of an evil place as well. It sounds like he was he didn't like Zoar. And why weren't there any men? Like why? It, it sounds like the girls believed there were no other men. Well, That's once the they got into the cave, yeah. Well, but even outside, they, like like the whole like say say you're in a, you're in a city and the whole city is destroyed. Maybe you just think, wow, the whole maybe you think the whole whole earth has been destroyed as well. You don't know like what's happened to no. everybody. You don't know if there's any survivors or not. I mean, that's kind of what this verse thirty one implies. Like at least no, it's not, it wasn't true. It was only Sodom and Gomorrah that were destroyed. There were other men on earth, but these girls didn't really know that it sounds like yeah because that's what they said right there was not a man on earth to come into us yeah after what is yours after the manner of all, all the earth like what does that mean <laughs> after after the earth has been destroyed i think is what there's like that's what they believe oh uh, they because they saw the destruction of, of Sodom yeah and they didn't know how widespread this was and so that's why they had to uh rape their father <laughs> yeah <laughs> because you know so yeah it is strange what they did but maybe that's the reason they did it is they they thought yeah, there, the he, they thought he was the last people. man on earth they thought he was the last man on earth and they wanted to repopulate the earth yeah mm -hmm. maybe they had good intentions i guess I, i'm I sure they did they're stuck in a cave but i think it is interesting what you said about zohar though that maybe uh, things were not so great there to have available men in there either. He was afraid. He was afraid to live in Zor. It doesn't say why, though, right? So we don't know yeah. why exactly. He was huh. afraid to live in Zor. Why? We're not told, right? It doesn't say why. Well, God was going to destroy that city. I'm sure. It's only maybe, because yeah. Lot said, "Let me go there." So yeah, maybe the whole region was a, like a pretty evil place. Yeah, and um, I mean, we can only kind of speculate, I guess. Uh, in, you know, and sometimes you can speculate in a reasonable way, but we still don't know for sure exactly. Sometimes the Bible doesn't tell us all the little details. You know what I mean? But I think we can um, guess pretty good up here where God said, "I'll let you go there, and I won't destroy that Zoar." All right, can we go? Can we go to the New Testament? section of the video <laughs> if you want i yeah. have a couple of verses here sodom is kind of, so sodom is really a it, it really is a typology of the end times judgment and and i think the new testament tells us that let's go to luke no 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 first first let's do an old testament one amos 4 11 amos just go to amos 4 yeah yeah and go down to verse 11 and now this is God, this is um, this is the prophet Amos talking to the Israelites, right? So now, so if we just judge the Sodomites, right? But now mm -hmm. God is judging and punishing the Israelites mm -hmm. who became like Sodom. They became like Sodomites, basically. So mm -hmm. verse 11, I overthrew some of you. He's talking to the, you. You are the Israelites now. I overthrew some of you as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and you were as a brand plucked out of the burning. Yet, yet, you did not 
you did not return to me. You did not repent, declares the Lord. Therefore, mm -hmm. thus I will do to you, or Israel, because I will do this to you. Prepare to meet your God, or Israel. You know, it goes on and on. Basically, I'm going to punish you, just like I punished Sodom, right? Repent. He's telling them, repent. The end is nigh. Repent. <laughs> well, he keeps asking yeah. to do that, and yet... It'll yeah, but he, he already says, I overthrew some of you as when God overthrew Sodom. So so the Israelites are often punished. I sent among you a pestilence, right? Mm. Pestilence like that of Egypt I sent against you. Does that sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> right? So God yeah. sends pestilence on the Israelites. Yeah. Like that of Egypt. He sent pestilence which is called signs and wonders, by the way. Many times throughout the Bible, the signs and wonders God did in Egypt, right? Which is the pestilence. And the Antichrist in the end times, in the 2 Thessalonians 2, will do false signs and wonders, which I think refers to false pestilence. Mm -hmm. Have we seen any false, pestil false <laughs> pestilence lately? A plague, that's what it is. Plague. A false plague. Does that sound familiar <laughs> to anybody? The plague. The Antichrist has a false plague. <laughs> it's kind of like that. That's that what this says here, in right here. It says it right here, right? Plague. So, so God will send a. So, so by the sword I killed your young men, the Israelites' young men. Your horses were taken captive. The stench, you know. Yet you did not return to me. Well, it kind of makes sense. It's like if you're getting punished by someone, you're like, you know. <laughs> So, but I, like that's God's method to get people to repent is to kind of like uh, give them uh, these uh, the pestilence and all this stuff, and He uses the enemy to do that sometimes. So I think what's going on now is similar to this: that God is using the satanic forces of this world to to this, judge and punish people for the sake of being repent to, to repent. And at the last verse of Revelation 9 says, after the demonic entities come and deceive everyone, it says they did not repent of they did not repent of their pharmakia. Yeah. Similar to here, so you did not return. There's a connection. Pestilent, you got pestilence, you got pharmakia, you got deception, blindness. And not repenting. Yeah, so I, I see what's going on now is a maybe maybe it's a judgment. But the thing is, but, it's also yeah. punishing the ones that didn't. You know, there it's persecution going on against people like us from this pharmacia thing. So yeah, 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 yeah. It's, but it's a, that's the tribulation that we have to go through. That's the testing. Okay, so that's that. So that's kind of an interesting one. And uh, let's see here. Now, it does say in another, in Zach, and don't go to this one now, but I'll just, we just talk about Moab, right? It was, yeah. Wasn't that the, uh, the the little daughters created Moab? They will be judged like Sodom. They should become like Sodom. And the Ammonites like Gomorrah. Yeah. So um, those people are kind of cursed as well, actually. Let's see, go to Luke 26, Luke 17, 26, verse 26. So we kind of, so like the flood story and the Sodom story are often used uh, together right because they're kind of this very similar right mm -hmm. so so 26 just as it was in the days of noah so it will be in the days of the son of man i think probably talking about the second coming right they were eating drinking marrying were given in marriage until the day when noah entered the ark then the flood came and destroyed them all and then 28 is sodom likewise as it was in the days of lot they ate they drank they bought they sold they planted they built they were living their lives, but mm. on the day that Lot departed from Sodom, fire and brimstone rained down from heaven and destroyed them all, so will it be on the day when the Son of Man is revealed. On that day, you know, so it, it continues on, but, uh, oh, 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 verse 33, look at that. <clears throat> whoever seeks to save his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life will preserve it. Yeah, that's a good one. So, so there you go. And those people that are trying to save themselves. And this word life is all often really means eternal life. Yeah. That's our real life is really eternal life. Yeah. And so if we're prepared to lose it, we essentially preserve it. Yeah. Yeah. So we should and, be um, in line with the guillotine. Now here's the here's the here's another pre-trib rapture verse that they use. I tell you on that night. 
two men will be in one bed. One will be taken and the other will be left. You know, that kind of stuff. So yeah. two men in the field, one will be taken. But really, that that's the end times judgment. One will be taken to, it's the, that's the wheat and the tares. The wheat will be taken into the eternal kingdom. The tares will be thrown into the fire. That's what that's talking about. It's not yeah. talking about any pre, because they're both taken. I mean, they're both, uh, one will be left. I think the ones left are the wheat. Yeah, I think so. Actually, too, because... they have it, they have it opposite because we're the ones who inher inherit the world. Yeah, because it's the wicked who always gets taken out, not left. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Although in Lot, Lot was taken out and saved, so that's I guess that's why the there's a bit of confusion there. But uh, but they were the city was destroyed. They weren't taking they weren't taken out to be restored. They were taken out to be destroyed. So I think there's another verse that connects to this where oh yeah the harvest of the wheat and the tear yeah um, the yeah tears are taken up into this to be squashed like grapes um so i think the wicked are the ones that are going to be taken out here although yeah. it doesn't really yeah. say that does it yeah well it depends on um i mean either way either way i guess you could read it both ways like if the if the either way one is going to be judged and punished and destroyed and yeah. the other is going to be saved into eternal life i guess it doesn't really matter which one is taken or which one leaves well, however that works it, it it there's there's two camps but it's not really talking about any pre-trib rapture at all no but, pe but people will read that into it you can read I in think anything if God you want. wanted to make that clear he would have just made it clear yeah using yeah. a lot of symbology over and over to say he will protect the righteous while judge the wicked however that's done you know and it's not like always with like rapture type of um symbolism because he's taking noah out with the boat he's taking lot out by the angels he's taking you know every story along the way god is protecting people in a different way and even like the furnace he protected daniel and his friends through the furnace so i i don't think it's ever yeah. like it's easier to just take them out he would have just said, "He, I'll just take you up while the rest of it burns. And he's never done it that way. So I don't know why yeah. we should just suddenly invent the theory that we'll just be plucked out. instead of Yeah, that's what they did. And it, it's, tied, it's a whole different thing. Yeah, that ties into the, uh, the whole dispensationalist uh, viewpoint as well. It's a, it's a, that's a, a good example of systematic theology that actually doesn't really align too much with the Bible very well. And uh, yeah. people end up, you know, there's the thing about prophetic uh, verses in the Bible need to be read in a different way, not as literal, because there is a lot of symbology involved in, pro if, especially the prophets have these dreamlike visions, and especially Revelation. It's actually a very symbolic book. And then people try to say, oh, this is what the symbol means exactly. And then it's like, mm -hmm. well, maybe not. Someone else has a different opinion. It, it's it's very difficult to interpret. So um, we can't. Some there there are some parts of the Bible that are not meant to be taken so literally because they are uh, visions or dreams or uh, you know whatever. Well, also, or, the truth hasn't really parables. been revealed in full because yeah. Daniel was told to keep that book of in you know whatever he's told to eat it or something. Jesus, Jesus has that book, yeah. Um, so and Jesus now it's going to be revealed later, which I don't think that. Well, maybe in Revelation actually, because because Jesus opens up the book. That's oh, the seventh right. seal, right? The seventh seal is opened yeah. up, but right. but it's opened up and described to us in very uh, very uh, symbolic uh, ways. Um, but it's still but consistent anyway. with all the rest of it. I, I think so, if once you know all these little intricacies that we're talking about from beginning to end, we'll probably be able to see Revelation pretty clearly, I think, by the time yeah. we get there. 2 Peter 2, 4, and we've looked at some of these already, but we're going to continue, we're going to add in the Sodom and Gomorrah. Just 2 Peter 2, yeah, and then verse 4, um, for if God did not spare the angels that sinned. So it's interesting here how the this is talking about the Genesis 6, angels that sinned. And then the flood, and then Sodom and Gomorrah. They're all connected here. 
So, uh, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into change of darkness to be kept for judgment. And if he did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, preacher of righteousness with seven others, and when he brought a flood upon the world of the ungodly, and if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah to destruction by reducing them to ashes, making them an example to those afterward who would live ungodly lives. So that's what it is. It's an example to us afterward who would live ungodly lives. And if he delivered righteous Lot. Ah, so now Lot is righteous. <laughs> you see that? Sudden, yeah. Although not, not personally, but technically. Technically, he was declared righteous probably because of Abraham. Right? He was declared, uh, he was saved. He was saved from that destruction. Because he didn't earn it, he didn't earn it. Get faith in God. It was mercy, we, and the word mercy was there in the in so the that, Doesn't story. that kind of imply that God can save the household through mercy? Yeah, yeah. Much God like, saves who He wants to save. Yeah, like Noah and his family, right? It's yeah, not, Lot was not like these other guys in Sodom. He wasn't that you know wicked. He he was he sounded like Lot was you know he was. He was he was he was not so evil, really. You know, who was distressed not by so evil. Oh, oh, it says right here. This is this is Jude. No, this is to Peter. Um, Peter's interpretation is that Lot, who was distressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked, yeah. Right? So that's why maybe Lot was crying out to God. You know, who maybe. knows? Or maybe. his daughters. You know, yeah. Um, for that righteous man lived among them. And what he saw and heard of their lawless deeds tormented his righteous soul day after day. Wow, we're getting a lot of detail right here. Yeah. Right? This is crazy. See, these are the this answers our questions, really, about like who was Lot, what Maybe was his character. It was Lot who was crying out. It kind of sounds like it. His soul, it says it, it that's what it says. Yeah. Tormented it was, it, his righteous yeah. soul, not just a soul. A righteous man lived amongst them. Yeah. He was greatly distressed, um, tormenting his righteous soul. Day after wow. day. So I don't I think, think it was just because of Abraham. I think he was considered righteous. His soul, he had a righteous soul. Yeah. Something in his conscience, right? He was he had this connection with God. He was not totally uh sold out to the satanic world. You know? And it was tormenting him day by day. Which yeah, I he didn't like what was going on. Like a lot of us now don't like what's going yeah, on, right? Exactly. So we should cry out to God who will inflict his complete judgment. Then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial. Uh oh, another pre trib. <laughs> Maybe I'll become a tree prib pre trib now. <clears throat> then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trial and to keep the unrighteous under punishment for the day of judgment especially those who walk after the flesh in pursuit of unclean desires and despise authority. Verse 9, well, that's very interesting. The nose, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials or temptations. Now, this is Greek, right? So, uh, what's the Greek word here? Um, this word here is pirosmos, temptation. Temptation seems to be a more likely translation, to be honest. What does yours say? Trials? Trial. Was, yeah, trial. Yeah, this says it could be trials or temptation. Um, could be tribulation, although that's a different word in Greek usually. There is another verse, um, maybe in Luke or somewhere else, that you could pray to be kept out of trials. Like it gives a command that to pray to be kept out of trials. Yeah, it could also mean, um, yeah, trials to tribulation. Um, it could mean that we don't give in. We don't give in to the temptation, like even the Lord's Prayer, right? Uh, mm. You know, it talks about uh, temptation. Uh, lead us not into temptation, but we are tempted. But I think it means don't let us be tempt. Don't let us fall into temptation. You know, don't but let it us, can also uh, mean trial and to tribulation too, because it's a rescue the godly from trial while analyzing it with Lot's story. So I think it's the physical rescue from trials and tribulations. So it could, it could be mean uh, to survive the trials yeah. and tribulations as well, though, and we survive spiritually through eternal life. 
You know what I mean? Actually, yes, but we all have physical troubles. To and rescue the guy from trials. The whole last story is that while the world was getting wicked around him, his soul is being tormented day and night from their actions where he was probably the only righteous man in that whole city, which we find out he was. Well, if you see in, in verse 9, it's contrasted. The first half is contrasted with the second half, which is the unrighteous are punished. Yeah. Keep the unrighteous under punishment until the day of judgment. So there's like a kind of a general punishment they live under, and then they're finally judged on the day of judgment. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's two blessings and curses, really, to to bless the uh, godly. The godly people are blessed, and the ungodly are punished and judged. And uh, but in a different way. Yeah. Not, I mean, like we are protected from the wicked and punishment and the things that go on generation after generation. But yeah, generally speaking, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's true. Yeah, that's probably what he's writing about here. Um, and he's talking about judging the the false teachers and certain people will receive judgment. And then Jude 7, the book of Jude, which is only one chapter, basically very, very similar. In fact, they're almost identical, these two uh, parts. Verse 6, like the, and like the, uh, likewise, the angels... Uh, well, let's go to verse 5 first. Now, uh, the Lord saved the people out of the land of Egypt and afterward destroyed those who did not believe. Likewise, the angels who did not keep to their first domain but forsake their own dwelling, he has kept in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Just as Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities in like manner gave themselves to immorality and went after different flesh, they served as an example by suffering the punishment of eternal fire. There's the punishment right there. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's a fire on Sodom and Gomorrah represents eternal fire of eternal punishment. You know what? I'm just kind of having a little epiphany here. <laughs> so the flood was because the angel had relations with human women, right? They went after different flesh. And human beings so were evil. Yeah. he had yeah, the yeah. judgment on the whole earth because yeah. they went after different flesh. Yeah, and then the same thing happened in Sodom and Gomorrah. They yeah, went after different flesh. Yeah, so they had to yeah, destroy yeah, yeah. the whole city just like the flood. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, and then and then yeah, they went after different flesh. Um, well, but here, exactly. here's the thing, though: when the Sodom and Gomorrah wickedness among themselves was going on for a very long time. So yeah. judgment didn't happen until that event where they were going after different flesh. Although they did come there to judge them. So they're maybe, not judged immediately. Yeah. The judgment yeah. takes a while. Um and people are usually given a warning and a chance to repent. God always gives people a chance to repent and most people do not repent. Um yeah, but it seems like the act of something to do with angelic mm -hmm. And human yeah, we're contact. told to be fruitful and mu multiply, and yeah. this is uh, yeah. There and and actually, some people see this um, in myself as well to a certain degree. This different flesh, and that's what it is. And in it's actually sarcos heteros, which is you know we get the word heterosexual from other flesh, a man and a woman are other flesh. But in this case, the in this case, the men were going after men, the same flesh. But it says other. Maybe it's other than normal, you know. But some people do see this as a reference to they were going after angels. I think they no, went after thing. different flesh. They were non-human flesh, even you yeah. know, not only men, but non non-human flesh. Then some commentators have they do have that view that that's what it means. If you look at the Greek, kind of makes sense. Um, although it's you know it's different ways to look at it. But yeah, they, I mean, they were angels though. That's the thing. They were actually angels. In the form of men so it's both right it's both they were homosexuals and they were going after angels but i don't i think it has less to do with homosexuality more to do with the fact that they were trying to go after different flesh i.e angels because and this, transvestites. Is what kind of, this is what's giving me this epiphany here gave themselves to immorality and went after 
different flesh, they serve as an example by the suffering, the punishment of eternal fire. Um, so that reminds me of the judgment of the earth with the angels um, coming down to have women. And that was different flesh. They weren't supposed to do that. So they sinned. You know, I guess there's a greater rule than people just sinning than having that interaction with angels. I think there's something else that's going on. Well, this porneia, this the the Greek word there is like based on porneia, where we get the word pornography. And it, it's kind of a general term. It just means, you know, sexual uh, immorality in general. So any any kind of sex outside of a marriage is considered to be porneia. But it's usually referenced in relation to more, you know, ex extreme fornication or or homosexuality or you know it's it's always it's always hard to pin it down exactly what kind of immorality they're talking about but it's something other than what god's uh, will is you know um, yeah i mean he he has verses about homosexuality and other sins and the transvestites are usually right there as well yeah i, I think i think yeah it, it's kind of what we see it's the it's and we see this now though this general the the morality of sodom is kind of the generally ex uh, the, but, the morality of the world today and they're pushing it they're trying to change the morality of people more and more through their propaganda to be more like sodom yeah and is there any other example in the bible where god has destroyed cities i mean we have the biggest one the planet with the flood then with fire sodom and gomorrah are there any other examples that? Yeah, the what's that one? The the where they they uh, surrounded the temp they surrounded the city with trumpets. Oh um, yeah, the what's the name of that place? Uh, Jericho. No. Jericho, Jericho, yeah, Jericho. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Jericho. You could say is kind of like that. So um, that. Um. Well, let's read verse eight. It says, "Likewise, these ungodly dreamers defile the flesh." reject authority so he, he's talking about like these fault he's talking about wicked people and false teachers especially that's what the context of jude is yeah then he says like what just like in sodom and like the pre-flood people the, these ungodly dreamers defiled the flesh mm -hmm. reject authority and slander uh, so angels beings. yeah is that say um, angels in your version uh re Defile the flesh, reject authority, and blaspheme the glorious ones. Oh, because yeah, that's kind of what the Greek I mean. actually says. The the glorious ones. Yeah, so it's you know defile the flesh. That could be talking about transvestites as well, right? Well, that defile the flesh like or homosexuality or sex yeah. with angels. Sex with angels. Yeah. I think that's a catch-all. Defile I think it's kind of all the stuff they're, they're having yeah. sex. You know, obviously, because it's because even right before this, they talk about um, they talk about the angels who sinned, right? In verse mm -hmm. six, so we see that they're always connected: the 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 flood story and the angels who sinned and Sodom and Gomorrah, and it's always kind of they're punished for the same same reasons. Um, so what's the next verse? Oh, Revelation eighteen. No, Revelation eleven. Revelation chapter 11. Oh, this is a good one. Let's this go to six. Sweeter. Let's go to, uh, all right. Let's just read the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have much time. I got to eat lunch, but uh, yeah. um, verse two, verse three, verse three, I will grant authority to my two witnesses and they shall prophecy for 1260 days clothed in sackcloth. These are the two olive trees and the two lampstands that stand before the Lord of the earth. And if anyone would harm them, fire pours from their mouth and consumes their foes. If anyone would harm them, this is how... Oh, I'm reading the ESV, by the way. I'll switch over to yours. If anyone desires to harm them, fire proceeds out of their mouth and devours their enemies. If anyone desires to harm them, he must be killed in this way. They have power to shut heaven that it might not rain during the days of their prophecy. They have power over the waters. To turn them into blood and to strike the earth with every plague as often as they desire so there's the plague again and seven hours well yeah yeah and it's yeah we don't have to get into this too much now but it's probably talking about the church in general real believers right and yeah but, but um we can talk about this more later but verse seven is where it gets interesting 
for today's context. When they have finished their testimony, the beast that ascends from the abyss in Greek, it says abyss there. So, so where does the beast come from? He comes from the abyss. And that's one of my hypo- my theories, is that Satan comes from the abyss. Mm. And it says it right here. The beast comes out of the abyss. The bottomless pit is the in- abyss in Greek. The literal word. Ab- that, abyss is a Greek word that comes into English. Will wage war against them and overcome them and kill them. Kill who? Who's them? Us. The witnesses. Ah, us. Them is us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Looking forward to that. <laughs> Their dead bodies will lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom. There's Sodom again, and Egypt, spiritually. And where, so where was our Lord crucified? What city are they talking about? Jerusalem. Why is, Jer- why is Jerusalem suddenly now Sodom <laughs> in Egypt? Because Jerusalem was full of evil, wicked people. Jerusalem is not the holy city, this earthly Jerusalem. They yeah. killed Jesus. They killed right. Jesus. They be Ju- Jerusalem, the holy city, became just like Sodom. Yep, and I think it references here that it's a wicked city, like it's meant for judgment. You know how they're saying, like, save Jerusalem; it's the holy land and the holy people. This first, I don't remember it all right now, but I think it, this chapter kind of explains the end times of Jerusalem as a wicked city yeah it's it's definitely not a holy city now no but it's it's in egypt right e- egypt and and egypt and sodom are kind of uh you know controlled by the fallen angels really right mm-hmm. and uh they, and god executed judgment harshly on sodom and egypt egypt was also kind of like sodom i mean that yes egypt was kind of like sodom right he just he killed all these babies and stuff right all these people the angel of death or the angel of god really Angel mm-hmm. of God um, went out, and then the Passover, they were saved if they had the blood, right? So it's um, so anyway, that's the word Sodom appears there, but it's kind of interesting. And there, yeah, so that was my other, that's the last one I have. Last one? And that's, yeah, I mean, Revelation 11 is a whole other show in and of itself, yeah, but I just wanted to tie it into Genesis Nineteen, um, Revelation eleven verse twelve. This is closed on a more positive note. Revelation eleven verse twelve, where we just were. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, "Come up here." And they ascended to heaven in a cloud, where their enemies watched them. Yeah, that's the rapture. No, that's 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 well. What is that? That's um, that's they go to heaven after they after they die. After they're killed, but that's that's the. That's I not, think yeah. this is the rapture. Come up here. They ascended to heaven in the cloud while their enemies watched them. That sounds like a rapture to me. It's just after death and not. I don't think there is a rapture at all. No, there's some references to like uh, in other like Thessalonians. There's a transformation. We we get our glorified bodies. I think it happens instantly. Like that's yes. Jesus well, returns. Why, why couldn't this be an instant? It's not the end yet. I, I think right here it's not the end yet. Jesus hasn't returned yet. They're 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 killed to go to heaven. Believers, you know, because people used to go to Sheol, and the unbelievers go to Sheol or Hades. But right and after here, this judgment is taking place, so mm, right after, well, it's a, a tenth of the city fell, kind of a partial judgment. Yeah, seven thousand people. Not oh, every. It's this end. is not the full, and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. So some people repented. It sounds like like here, actually. These people and the rest were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. These people repented. 7,000 yeah. men. No, seven, 7,000 men, a symbolic number. I believe all the numbers in Revelation are symbolic. Yeah. So that that's, you know, and um, that's the second woe, and the third woe is soon to come. So this is not the end. This is not the final end times judgment. It's just that this is people getting killed in the tribulation yeah from the beast that comes out of the abyss you know what i mean so uh um, it's a war against this is tribulation while yeah make war on them and conquer them and kill them so and um taken up and then um, the now it doesn't say if it's all of them or some of them maybe you know maybe you know we don't have to say it's all but it could be but but paul does say some people who are left will be 
transformed instantly, you know. Yeah, so. there are survivors. Beyond. Some, yeah. But yeah, like you're saying, this is um this so I think this is the tribulation verse for sure. Like this verse seven. Yeah. The beast that rises from the abyss will make war on them and conquer them and kill them. I mean, how much more clear could it be? I guess some people don't see the two witnesses as being the church. That's the difference. Oh. But it, it, and that's a whole other show. We can point that out later on. I don't have energy yeah, right now to do that. I, but um, I believe it's the church. Other people think it's two different dudes, you know, mm-hmm. Moses and Elijah or whoever they think it is. What, like, why Why would Moses come and be a witness? You know, he's already has been a witness. Um, <laughs> well, this, it explains the sequence. <laughs> what is all this? It's symbolic. Happening. Revelation yeah. is a symbolic book. Yeah. Well, not only is symbolic, but it actually explains to you like who the two it are. Yeah, yeah. It it, it, it usually it, it usually does interpret these symbols for us. Yeah. We just have to read carefully. So um, well, this, anyway, you know, I guess when we finally get through the book of Revelation, uh, we definitely would have a lot to talk about. Um, but here, I guess we know what happens to the wicked anyway. There's a lot going on in Revelation. I don't think we can even do justice. But it does kind of relate to Sodom, you know, in the sense yeah. of, uh, yeah, if the world, if if Jerusalem is, it was even called, spiritually called uh, Sodom in Egypt, um, you know, that's, uh, yeah. Well, we know the condition of what's going on there, which is... In the new- so, in the new, yeah, yeah, and the and the new Jerusalem will come out of heaven. Yeah, the new Jerusalem, not this old one here, not this place over there in the Middle <laughs> East that has nothing to do with it. That's I so, don't, Sodom. Don't money over there to keep keep doing wicked stuff. Okay, so next time we'll do twenty Abraham and can you say Abim- Abimelech? Abimelech. Man, these yeah. are hard for me. So we did cover a, quite a bit today. Whoa. My light's fading out there. See my light? Yeah. <laughs> Something my light's telling light's me it's time on. to go. I'm all right. Sign. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for all. All right. Thanks a lot. Over. All right. Have See a you next week. Day. Thank you. Bye. Bye.